everyone, and welcome to Get Started Fast with Avid Sibelius 7.5, presented by Avid Blogs. My name is Philip Rothman, and in this five-part tutorial series designed mostly for new users, we'll go through the basics of Sibelius 7.5 so you can get started fast and make music with it as quickly as possible. For this lesson, we'll work with Sibelius's Dynamic Parts feature so that you can create individual parts that are intelligently linked to your score. We'll go over Sibelius's printing and exporting options, and we'll explore the many ways to share your music with a wider audience. Generally, you won't want to start working on your parts until after you've finished working on your score. We all know, though, that changes are made to the music at all points in the process. This is why dynamic parts are so useful, because you can change your score or part, and depending on the nature of your change, it will be instantly updated in both the score and the part. Let's go to the Parts tab. Sibelius generally creates all the parts you need for your score by default, but if for some reason it hasn't, you can click the New Part button, and Sibelius will offer to create them for you. You'll see a list of all the parts in your document by clicking this plus menu on the right-hand side of the Document tab bar. Click on any part to open it. Notice how the default paper texture for a part is different from that of the full score, allowing you to easily distinguish between the two. As we start opening parts, you'll notice that Sibelius creates a tab for each one of them. Click on a tab to view a part, and drag the tabs in any order you like. Use the shortcut Control tab on both Mac or PC to cycle through any open tab just like you would in an internet browser. And you can even peel off a tab into a new window by simply dragging it away from the main window. You'll want to remember the shortcut W for quickly switching between the full score and a part. If you select a staff in your score and press W, Sibelius will instantly switch to that particular part at the place selected and it will create a new tab for it if it isn't already open. Simply click the Close button to close a part. If our score is not a transposing score, Sibelius will still display the part transposed, as it is meant to be read by the performer. Notice, for example, how the clarinet part is transposed to be a major second higher than written. You can switch off transposing score for your part, but that would be very unusual. Let's go back to the score, and I'll turn transposing score back on. When you move an object in a part, Sibelius will color it orange to show you that its position has changed from that of the score. You can fine-tune slurs, the positioning of dynamics, rehearsal marks, and many other things. Generally speaking, you can move objects around in a part without worrying about their effect in the score. Notice though, if I add or change a note, these changes will be reflected in the score. This is also true if I add or delete bars, of course. In certain types of music, it's helpful to have a regular amount of music on each system. To enable this, go to Layout and click Auto Breaks. You can explore many options here, but for now, let's switch on Use Auto System Breaks every four bars. We can use the same layout techniques we learned in our last lesson. Let's add a page break here. The shortcut for that is Command Return on Mac or Control Return on PC or I could select it from the ribbon. Then I'll add a couple system breaks by clicking a bar line and pressing return. I'll make a few more minor adjustments and our part is looking good. If you find that you wish to apply the same settings across any open parts or across all the parts in your piece, go to the Parts tab and click Part Appearance. For instance, you could decide to apply your auto break settings to many parts at once.
Another way to quickly format parts, if the music is similar in another part, is to copy the entire part layout from one part to another. Let's try this. Here's my clarinet 2 part, which contains very similar music to clarinet 1. Just click Copy Part Layout and choose your Source Part and Destination Parts and click OK. Yes, I'm sure I want to do this. And in a flash, the layout of the page and system objects of my clarinet 2 part is updated, along with any other parts to which I've chosen to copy the layout. OK, so let's say your baritone sax player is ill, but you have a bassoonist waiting around with nothing to do. However, the bassoonist reads bass clef at concert pitch, not treble clef, a major six plus an octave higher than concert pitch, like the Barry sax. You can create a new part based on an existing instrument in your score without actually adding that new instrument to the score itself. Just have your source part open and click Copy and Change Instrument. In this case, we'll choose Bassoon and we'll instantly have a new bassoon part that is dynamically linked to the baritone sax part. We'll want to use copy part layout here, and in no time, your bassoonist is ready to go. Once your score and parts are done, you'll want to print and share them. To print, you can click the Print All Parts button in the Parts tab, or go to the File tab and click Print. The common shortcut Command P on Mac or Control P on PC works as well. You can choose the full score, parts, or both. And if you need to print more than one copy of a part, just double click the number of copies and adjust as you need. Select only certain parts, if necessary. You get a nice large preview of exactly what your printout will look like, and you can navigate to any page in the preview. There are many detailed options here, depending on your printer's abilities and your needs. You can make PDFs of your music just as easily by clicking Export and choosing PDF. Many different self-explanatory options are available. For example, you can export the score and all parts in one combined file. Or you can just export the parts you need, each in their own file. Use these file name wildcards to automatically generate a unique name for each PDF file. Choose your destination folder and click Export. Let's go through the many other ways to export your music. You can make an audio file of your score using the same sound library and configuration you currently use, or a different one if you like. Sibelius offers very advanced bit depth and sample rate options should you need them for high-end mastering. The resulting file will be an uncompressed AIFF or WAV digital audio file, depending on whether you use a Mac or PC. From there, you can easily make a CD or convert your files to MP3s using other software like iTunes. New in Sibelius 7.5 is the video export option. Again, you can choose your playback settings and various other options. This will result in a movie file of your score being played back. If you're creating music examples for a test or for a book, you can export your music as graphic files in any one of a number of formats. If you make a selection in the usual way in Sibelius, the Selected Systems option will be available. To make a more custom selection, go to the Home tab and choose Select Graphic and make a bounding box selection in your score. You could go back to the export page and export the selection there, or you can copy the selection to the clipboard and paste it directly into another application, such as a word processor. You can export your score and optimize its settings for the Avid Scorch mobile app. You can open the file on your device and play it back, transpose it, and more. You can also export your score as a Sibelius Scorch web page. The result will be both a Scorch-compatible Sibelius file and an HTML file, both of which you'll need to upload to your website. You can decide whether you want the viewer to be able to print and save your music. Anyone who has the free Scorch plugin installed will be able to view and play your score in any modern browser, even if they don't own Sibelius.
Music XML is an open format for sharing music among many different software programs. Export your score in Music XML format to send it to someone using Finale, for example. Exporting your music as MIDI is useful when opening music in sequencers or digital audio workstations, where you'd be manipulating the musical data along with audio tracks. This is for when you're less concerned about the appearance of your music, as very little notation data is included in MIDI files. You can't open Sibelius 7.5 files directly in previous versions of Sibelius, but you can export a Sibelius 7.5 file to a previous version going all the way back to Sibelius 2. Keep in mind that the elements of your score that take advantage of features added in the upgrades throughout the years may not be supported in an earlier version, so the appearance of your score may change. Finally, if you plan on using the same or similar instrumentation and stylistic elements of your score for future projects, you can export them as a manuscript paper, so you can quickly begin a new project with those settings. Your manuscript paper will appear in the Quick Start dialog we reviewed in Lesson 2. Let's look at the way you can share your music without leaving Sibelius at all. You can email your file to anyone directly from within Sibelius. You have the option to send them the current file, a file for use in the previous Sibelius version, a PDF, or all three. Just type your own email address up top and the addresses of your recipients along with the subject and message below. Score Exchange is the website powered by the Scorch plugin that allows you to buy, sell, and publicize your music. You can publish to Score Exchange directly, provided you've already set up your account credentials. Be sure to go to the Info tab to complete any additional information about your score, so that the data is as detailed as possible. If you have a YouTube or Facebook account, you can publish the video of your score playback directly to those services without needing to first export the video as we reviewed earlier in this lesson. The options are similar, except that instead of creating a file on your computer, you send your video directly to YouTube or to Facebook. Likewise, you can publish an audio file directly on SoundCloud. This concludes our Get Started Fast with Avid Sibelius 7.5 series. If you missed any of the tutorials, you can find them all at avidblogs.com slash sib7 fast. To learn how to create music without bounds and deliver higher quality, inspiring music, visit avidblogs.com slash music.